Ahoy hoy. Welcome back to my channel. Um, so today I thought I would react to this article written in 1958 in the magazine McCallus. And it's 129 ways to get a husband. And I got this idea from watching a video of Alonzo Larones. So I will post a link to his video as well as the link to the article in the description box and stuff. So you guys can read it. Read the article for yourselves as well as see his video. So let's get started. 129 ways to get a husband. First part is where to find them. Uh, number one is get a dog and walk it. I'm a cat person. <laughs> and I didn't get a dog until after I hooked up with my significant other. Uh, we got a dog like... How long in our relationship did we get a dog? Six years into our relationship. Um, here's the problem I have with this. First of all, not a lot of women are dog people. You have a lot of cat people too. And second, dogs can be expensive. Um, especially if you get it from a breeder. But even if you didn't get it from a breeder, not everybody can afford to have a dog. And... Another reason is just because you walk a dog and stuff doesn't mean you're going to hook up with somebody. Um, because the two primary ways that we walk dogs is to give them exercise and so they can relieve themselves. I don't think it would be an attractive trait thing to see somebody picking up dog crap. And then having to carry it until you dumped it somewhere. <laughs> so, uh, no. <laughs> um, number two, have your car break down at strategic places. No. Good way to get a serial killer. No, thank you. Um, three, attend night school. Take courses, men like. Um... thing about this is that why not attend school or attend college during the day? Um, I mean, wouldn't colleges back then work similar to the way things are now? No. Um, so, I would have to say no to that. Um, the only way I would attend night school is if I wanted to continue to learn something. That's the only way I would look, want to go to night school. Because again, it costs money. It costs money. Um, four, join a hiking club. Now that is actually a good idea for me personally because I do like to hike at times. And, you know, if you get to see a certain guy after a while and they see you, that could lead to something. So that one's not that bad. Number five. Look in the census report for places with the most single men. Nevada has 125 males for every 100 females. Um, that just reeks desperation. <laughs> um, there's single people everywhere. You just gotta know where to look. And I'll, I'll get to I'll get to my point at the end of this video why a lot of this stuff is. Your crap. Um, six, read obituaries to find eligible widow, widows or widowers. Um, I don't think a widow is going to be that press to hook up with somebody just as their spouse or their partner has died. Um, there, is this, there is something in society where people are guilt-tripped into getting to another relationship or marriage as soon as their partner has died. And even if you didn't have that, you would also have the concept that they may not want to be with anybody else. So I, I that just reeks of desperation as well. Um, the only way that would work is if you're a widow and you can reach out to them and say, I understand what you're going through, you know, you want to talk, if you want to talk about it, you know, call me and stuff, but I wouldn't try 
to reach out to a widow just to hook up with them, just to reach out. And then once you develop a friendship, we'll see, you'll see where that goes to. But I would not do that just to look for somebody. It just sounds weird. <laughs> um, seven, take up golf and go to different golf courses. Yeah, don't you need a membership to do that? At golf, golf clubs at least? Um, and I'm sorry, golf is not my cup of tea. I would not take up something that I find to be personally boring just to hook up with somebody. So, no. Eight. Take several short vacations at different places rather than take one long one at one place. Okay. Um, first of all, you need the money to do this. <laughs> Second of all, if you're working, how are you going to get all this time off from work to take several mini vacations rather than long ones when people in the States don't even have that many vacation days to begin with? Now, if this was Sweden and the UK, I could see it maybe working out because I know in Sweden there's like four weeks of mandatory vacation and I think the UK has something similar. Um, but in the US, nah. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, let's see. And then even if you did have the vacation time, how do you have the money to take all those vacations? The only way you would have to do it is if you would take just a weekend vacation somewhere that doesn't have a lot, doesn't require a lot of money and stuff. But I don't see, see that happening. Nine, sit on a park bench and feed the pigeons. If this was a hobby, I can see this being fun, actually. But to hook up with somebody... And how long are you willing to go? How far are you willing to go with this idea? Are you going to do this in the cold? Are you going to do this when it's really hot? And I don't know about most men, but it doesn't seem like sitting down on a bench and feeding the pigeons is a pastime of theirs, or alone most of anybody else. I mean, personally, I can see that being fun for me, especially as I get older. But... I don't see how this would be possible. 10. Take a bicycle trip through Europe. Again, if you have the money. <laughs> if you have the money to go to Europe to do that. Um, and let alone have the money to stay at all the hotels throughout Europe. Um, and you, you would need a passport. You... Yeah. Now, I know... A lot of places in the European Union have, like, open border policy. But then there's other places in... I'm probably going to say this name wrong. But in the Skigan area, um, that consists of Denmark, Netherlands, and other countries, where you need documentation to prove where you're from and, where, and stuff before they let you through and all, which... In hindsight, doesn't make sense to me, especially if you're going to a different place, but you do need that when you travel, even in this stage. May not have happened back then, but... Although probably back then it would have been different because the Soviet Union still existed, so... Number 11, get a job in a medical, dental, or law school. Mm. Like as a receptionist or something? You would need skills to have a job even in those places, even if you're not going as a doctor or a dentist or a lawyer. Twelve, become a nurse or an airline stewardess. They have very high marriage weights. I don't know how true that is this day and age, but um, in order to become a nurse, you would have to go through medical school too which could be costly. Airline stewards might be okay because you get to travel around a lot and you usually get some sort of discounts and stuff because you're traveling a lot. But whether they have high marriage rates, I'm not sure. But I wouldn't do either. Just to find a man. Ask your friend's husbands who the eligible men are in their offices. This actually still happens this day and age. I mean, it doesn't have to be offices, but... 
even this day and age, people ask me, oh, Lindsay, is your friend single or whatnot? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> nope. I mean, I'm not married, but I've been in a relationship since 2003. And my three best friends are actually, I have four best friends, but like my three best friends in America are either married or engaged. And my best friend here in Sweden is in a relationship, so. Oh, okay. 14. Be nice to everybody. They may have an eligible brother or son. Or you can just be nice to everybody. Kindness goes a long way, regardless who you're being nice to. It, it's, it should go along the line of the philosophy, treat others the way you want to be treated. So if you want to be treated nicely, treat others nicely, that kind of thing. Fifteen, get a government job overseas. This day and age, you would have to go through extensive background checks in order for that to happen. At least the way it used to be. Can't say now, nowadays. But I would imagine there's some sort of background checks that are needed. And you would have to get a passport. And it's not cheap. <laughs> Let's just say that. It's not cheap. Volunteer for jury duty. I don't think you can really volunteer for jury duty. They just send you a summons. And you have to go to it. Unless you have a certain reason why you can't go to it. 17. Be friendly to ugly men. Handsome is as handsome does. Again, it ties into what I remarked about point 14. Be nice to everybody. If you treat others well, they treat you well in return. There's no reason to act nasty towards people unless they're an asshole themselves 18 tell your friends that you are interested in getting married don't keep it a secret i don't know anyone who would ever keep it a secret that they want to get married i mean i i don't know i don't know that about that one all maybe back then it was common to keep it a secret that you don't that you wanted to get married, it would make more sense that if you don't want to get married, you want to keep that a secret because a lot of people in society think that getting married, and especially back then, is this big major goal in life that you should achieve. So to me, especially nowadays, it would be more logical to keep it a secret if you don't want to get married compared to if you want to get married. Because that one, that one's a new one for me. <laughs> um, 19. Get lost at football games. How would you, like, act like you don't know where your car is? I mean, how is that? Okay. Uh, it reeks of desperation. A lot of these things reek of desperation. If you get lost... And you're trying to find a husband. Yeah, I'm speechless. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea to do. Just to find somebody. Because you don't know who is going to help you out. You could get a serial killer. Or you could get a rapist. You can get someone you don't want to help you. So, I don't know. I, I would not get lost at football games or anything intentionally. If you ask me. 20. Don't take a job in a company run largely by women. Sexist. Um, what happens if they're male employees? You know, especially in this day and age, you know. Just because you have women bosses doesn't mean there's no male employees that work for them. Um, 21. Get a job demonstrating fishing tackle in a sporting goods store. No. <laughs> um, it, fishing doesn't seem to be common these days, you know? Um, and besides, I would rather, I would rather crab than fish. That's because I'm from Maryland, so, but it's been a while since I've been crabbing too, but I, I wouldn't get a job just to get a job, just to get a guy. I've actually done that before. Believe it or not. 
I had a crush on somebody and I wanted to work at their place of business just so I could hang out with them more. And let me tell you all, not a good idea. Especially if they would leave the job eventually. And uh, you don't want to work at some place just to be around your crush or to get a man. All right, You get a job other than financially financially supporting yourself or supporting your family, you would get a job that you would hope would make you happy. At least that's my outlook on things. Um, 22, on a plane, train, or bus, don't sit next to a woman. Sit next to a man. But what happens if you're bisexual or a lesbian? Does that, does that still count? And even if you're not, you know... I don't care who I sit next to, as long as I have a seat. <laughs> Especially if my legs are sore. And, and the thing is, again, if you don't, if it's one thing if you ride you ride the same bus and you see the same people riding the bus, and you want to sit down to a guy that you develop a crush on. That's one thing, but it's different with a stranger because again, you're not, you don't know who you're getting. Vetting is very important when you're dating people. Uh, 23. Go to all reunions of your high school or college class. There may be wid widows there. I would hope not. I, I graduated in 2000. I would hope there's not many people who are widowed at my high school reunion. <laughs> and even if there weren't, even if they were, you know... It seems kind of shallow and callous to want to go someplace just to hook up someone, and your dire and your direct goal is to hook up with a widower. Why not someone who isn't going through grief? I don't know. And, and then the other point is, it costs money to go to reunions too. <laughs> Let alone you might be far away <laughs> to go to a reunion like I am. I mean, I'm living 3,000 miles away from home in another country, so it's not always easy for me to go back home for reunions, and I'm in a relationship, so. Um, and besides, I think in this day and age, you, you, you already have in so much contact with your classmates anyway on social media that it kind of takes away the reason why reunions were developed in the first place. But I can understand why people want to go to a reunion. But I keep in touch with the classmates that I wanted to keep in touch with. And I'm satisfied with that. So. 24. Don't be afraid to associate with more attractive girls. They may have some leftovers. Okay. Um... Correct me if I'm wrong, um, but in the 1950s, wasn't it kind of virtuous to keep your virginity until you got married? Um, and it seems to be a dumbass stereotype to assume that just because you're attractive means that you're easy or you sleep around and shit. That is such a stupid Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Um. Associate yourself with anybody. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Twenty-five. Get back to your hometown for a visit. The wild kid next door may have become a very eligible bachelor while you were away. Well, I do go back to my hometown periodically. But just to visit my family, and that should be the central goal of why you go back. And if the wild kid next door, even though I never had a wild kid live next to me, if someone drove me nuts as a kid, and they're still similar to how they were as kids, most likely I would not go out with them. It doesn't matter if they're a legible bachelor or not. Uh, especially if you treated me badly as a kid, I would definitely not want to go out with you as an adult. So, Don't room with a girl who is a sad sack and let her pull you down to her level. 
this is like a knock at people who suffer from depression. I, I get that it is hard to deal with someone who can be in a negative place a lot. But the only time I would say you shouldn't live with somebody or associate somebody is if they're toxic. There's a difference there's a difference between being sad and depressed and being toxic. And usually depressed people who suffer from depression aren't usually the toxic type of people. But sometimes you do get a depressed person that's toxic. But I wouldn't room or associate someone who is just sad or depressed. I would avoid someone who's toxic. There's a difference. 27. Get a part-time job in a convention borough. Nah. <laughs> I don't... I, I don't get that one. Convention borough. Okay. 28. Change apartments from time to time. Again! What happens if you don't have the money to do that? This article was writing, like, women back then made bundles of money and stuff. I mean, it was, what, just a decade after... Nearly, like, a decade after the end of World War II. <clears throat> no. What I'm trying to get at is that for a while, women can work in the workplace. And then, once the war was over, you know, men were expected to work while the women stayed at home. Um, excuse me for a bit. I'm sorry about that. Am I washer was done and kept making a beeping noise and it was driving me nuts so I had to stop that. Um, <laughs> what I was trying to get at before the little pause was women, even if women worked outside the home back then, they didn't make a lot of money. Especially not enough money to change apartments a lot. And just to look for somebody, really? When you move, I would hope that you would move because you want to find a nice, safe place to live at. Not to find somebody. That, for me, doesn't make sense. But anyway. 29. When traveling, stay at small hotels where it's easier to meet strangers. I have to agree with what Alonzo Lerone said. It's probably better to be at larger hotels because... You get more variety of people to meet. Small hotels usually attract a small population of people compared to a large one. But for me, I would stay at a small hotel because it's cheaper compared to a bigger hotel. 30. Learn to paint. Set up ESOL outside engineering school. What is with these dumb stereotypes? Not every single guy is an engineer. Unbelievable. I would take a painting if you want to paint. How about that? I mean, and again, not every single guy is into artists. It's just, okay, now we're on a different category. How to let him know you're there. Wasn't the third, first 30 points kind of some, under the same thing? Anywho... How to let him know you're there. 31. Show him when you walk into a room that he's in. Oh, yes. Yeah. Show him that you're a klutz. Yes, that would that would totally get his motor running. Let alone, if you do stumble, there's a good slight chance you might actually hurt yourself. Yeah. 32. Forget discretion every once in a while and call him up. Mmm. It depends. Like if, yeah, I, I that is actually okay. I mean, but I wouldn't call him up if you already called him and he hasn't called you back. Then yeah, I wouldn't do that. Carry a hat box. I have no idea what the fuck a hat box is, especially since people don't wear hats much nowadays. Thirty four. Wear a band aid. People always ask what happened. Do they? Well, I mean, it depends, but I don't see how that's going to get anybody to notice you or anything. 35. Make a lot of money. Uh, of course, if you want women to travel around a lot and buy things and go into middle school and stuff, of course. 
However, you don't even, you don't always have that luxury. You sometimes you have to take what you can get, unfortunately. 36. Learn several funny stories and learn to tell them well, but make sure you don't tell them to him more than once. Uh, I wouldn't learn funny stories just to get a man. I would learn funny stories just to be entertaining because I'm an entertainer. Um, a beat not a well-known one. But I, I am prone to repetition, unfortunately, so my significant other has probably heard a few of my funny stories. But, oopsie. He's dealt with them. He's dealt with that fine. 37. Walk up to him and tell him you need advice. I actually could work a little bit. Um, I think I've done that before in the past. <laughs> I need help with this. Even though you're pretty good at it. <laughs> kind of like what Lindsay Lohan's character did in Mean Girls. <laughs> 38. Dropping the handkerchief still works. Uh, but a lot of people don't carry handkerchiefs a lot these days, so... No. 39. Have your father buy some theater tickets that have to be got rid of. Probably would have said buy theater tickets that need to get rid of or some shit like that or are about to expire. Again, if you don't, if you, if you, if you need your dad or your mom to buy you stuff, then most likely you don't have enough money to do all the other stuff mentioned beforehand. <laughs> Again, and this is like a mixed message, like, oh, you either need a lot of money to do these things or you need to ask other people to pay for you. And it's like, hmm. Anyway, uh, moving on. Although, I would have to say, getting theater tickets or any tickets is probably a good way to get someone to go on a date with you or something. Especially if they're interested in something like basketball. Or like a particular movie or something. 40. Stay in a corner and cry softly. Chances are, are good that he'll come over to find out what's wrong. Yeah, I don't cry out in public. <laughs> Yeah, I know I made a video of me crying when my friend died, but I hate crying in public. It makes me feel vulnerable as hell. Um, so I would not do that, personally. But comparing how aloof people are these days, I doubt this would happen. I would say if you're sobbing like mad, that might work. But again, I wouldn't... That, that just rings... Desperation. All these ring desperation. 41. Don't let him fish for your name the next time you meet. None of this guess who stuff. I, I kind of agree with this. Like, properly introduce each other. Saying my name is blah, blah, blah. And your name is blah, blah, blah. And stuff like that. So I kind of agree with the 41 a little bit. 42. If you're at a resort, have the bellboy paid you. <laughs> I have never had anything to do with a bellboy, ever, anywhere I went. And I've been to a lot of hotels. Mainly because I'm in Europe, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know how to react to 42 that much. Yeah. 43, buy convertible. Men like to ride in them. Uh, I'm not buying a car for anybody unless it's for me or for my kids when they get older. <laughs> I'm not buying a car for someone... That may not return my affections, let alone why not like convertibles. Now, my significant other likes convertibles. He did have a convertible. But guess who got sunburned in that convertible? Me. Yes, me. He didn't. I did because of my damn Irish jeans. You're talking to someone who even gets sunburned in clouds. It's so stupid. Ugh. Uh... <laughs> Sorry for that little rant. 44. Learn how to bake tasty apple pies. Bring one in the office and let the edible bachelors taste it. Why not let everybody taste it? Yeah. I would bring it for everybody. Um, 45. Laugh at his jokes. That's a good one. Unless they're stupid and I don't get it, then I won't laugh. 46. If there's a wallflower among the men you know, why not cultivate him? For all you know, he may be a diamond in the rough. I kind of hard to do that when I'm a wallflower myself. <laughs> Unless there's a dance going on, then I dance and get attention that way.
But most of the time, I'm a wallflower because of my social anxiety. 47. Accidentally have your purse fly open, scaring its contacts all over the street. No. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Good way for someone to steal my stuff. No, thank you. Even if I'm trying to catch a man. Next category. How to, how to look good to him. 48. Men like to think there are authorities on perfume. Ask his advice on what kind you should wear. Really? Hmm. All I would do is ask him if he likes the scent of it, and if he doesn't, don't wear it again. But I would not get advice about what to wear and stuff. 49. Get better looking glasses. Men still make passes at girls who wear glasses or try contact lenses. Ah. Uh, again, this goes back to the generalization that people who wore glasses were somehow unattractive and stuff. And of course, Nowadays, that stereotype seems to be dying a lot because more people are wearing glasses. I don't know what that says, but I mean, either all of our eyes are beginning to suck or, you know, people are feeling more comfortable wearing glasses regardless. Oh, my glasses look good. Uh, and I wouldn't try contact lenses because I have issues touching my eye. 50. Practice your drinking with your women friends first. How about I practice with my family first? Yeah, since you get supervision by your family and you know how much you can take it, I would practice with them first. They can let you know when you've had too much and stuff. And then you can do it with your woman friends. And then you can do it with guys. But I would recommend family rather than women friends first. 51. If you dye your hair, pick a shade and stick to it. What, were women back then dyeing their hair all kinds of colors? I thought that was something that, more, that was more modern. I'm only going to dye my hair when I get old. When all this becomes gray, I'm dyeing my hair then. I don't, I'm not sure how well dyes work on totally gray hair. Oh, well. I do what I leave off at. 52. Wear high heels most of the time. They're sexier. Nope, I will fall. So, no. 53. Unless he happens to be shorter than you are. Ha! <laughs> Most people are taller than I am. I'm only 4 foot 11. Or 1.50 centimeters, if you use that measurement. 54. Tell him he's handsome. Okay. 55. Take good care of your health. Men don't like girls who are ill. Ouch! So... So I guess people should ignore the vow till in sickness and, and health till death do us part. That's a dumb thing to say. I don't I don't think a lot of people don't like to be around people with illnesses, not because they're ill, but because, you know, it's hard to watch their suffering, you know. But I do agree it's it's a good idea to take care of her health, but not for other people's benefit, for you mainly. You know? God damn, men don't like girls who are ill? Go fuck off with that. I think I'm going to stop at 60 because the video is beginning to get very long now. 56, if you look good in sweaters, wear one in, on every third date. Why not wear one when you want to? 57. Dress differently from the other girls in the office. Oh, that's right. Stand out more. Yeah. That gets you noticed. And sometimes not in a good way. 58. 8. Get a sunburn. <laughs> I don't need to do that intentionally. It happens. Again, I'm Irish descent. I burn even in cloud cover sometimes. But why the hell a sunburn? Because you're tan? 59. Watch your vocabulary. Mm, no. 60. Go on a diet if you need to. Uh, I mean, only if you feel like it. Because, you know, for your benefit, not for someone else's benefit. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to continue on in another video. So if you like this video, hit like. If you subscribe, I'll be joyous. What do you think about this list so far? And I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.